three pabbies and we play for teeths and ambitions okay well wait is that enough oh it's enough we win the game this deck is an absolute chaotic mess i mean just look at how many one ofs there are you'd have to be insane to bring this to a tournament introducing ellie and fabrice the french maniacs who brought this deck to the vienna 3k europe's largest ever locana tournament not only did ellie place in the top 16 cut but they also had a very respectable fourth place in swiss unfortunately they lost to the only counter deck in the top cut but regardless proved just how capable the deck is grand pabby is a card that many including myself overlooked as being too clunky and slow to make work in the fast meta of early set two now that the meta's settled down a bit and the two Two heavyweights of a slow, greedy Sapphire Steel Ramp and Ruby Amethyst Control, this rogue deck is nicely positioned to make its mark on Lorcana history. Now listen closely, as this deck is hard to wrap your head around. It might take you a few games to get used to the unusual play patterns, but if you've played a Tomatoa item deck before, it should hopefully be a bit more intuitive for you. In the early game, we have three main objectives. Which ones you focus on will depend on the matchup, but we'll get to that later. Firstly, you want to stall out the board to buy time to set up our resource engine. We do this for our early game threats and removal tools. If your opponent's playing a slow deck, feel free to ignore these in favor of ink and focus on our next two objectives. Secondly, we want to start ramping to gain as much ink as we can as quickly as we can. We do this with Sapphire's favorite Fishbone Quill on turn 3. Unlike a traditional Sapphire deck though, the truly optimal line is to play Marisa's Workshop on 3 and then Fishbone Quill on 4, leaving us one leftover ink to trigger Workshop's effect, drawing a card. It's okay to play Quill turn late in this scenario, as it'll still take us the same amount of turns to ramp to 7 plus ink for Be Prepared. Hopefully, after Quill on turn 3 or 4, you should already have a pop score on the board from turn 1. This plus Marisa's Workshop is the core of our item draw engine, which lets us ramp every single turn while building card advantage thanks to Haram's draw 2 effect and Nick and Tomatoa's item recycling effects. Remember to always leave at least one ink to draw extra cards for each workshop you have in play. And especially if you're playing in paper, keep in mind you don't have to commit the ink all at once. Because the effects resolve independently of each other, we can pay one ink at a time until we find the card we need. This lets us conserve ink and also cards in our deck to play around being milled by a whole new world. In the mid game, we're going to reset the board with Be Prepared. This gives us room to continue to build resources while removing key threats with our plethora of removal tools. Lastly, in the late game, this will depend a lot on what deck we're up against. We can either choose to close out the game with a Tomatoa beatdown strategy, this is particularly effective in steel decks but don't have access to big single target removal like let it go and dragon fire and with shield of virtue we can ready our tomatoa to protect it from being traded into or to let it singer be prepared resetting the board for cheap after questing into matchups that do have access to lots of effective removal like sapphire and especially ruby and ruby amethyst we want to keep stalling out the board until we can reach enough ink and combo pieces to finish them with our grand pabby one turn kill now let me break down the conditions required to pull off the surprisingly consistent Grand Pabby OTK. Firstly, you must have one to two pabbies in hand or on board, and if you can get three, that's even better. Next, you must have at least a couple healing items in play. It's key to remember that Gumbo Pot can be especially effective, as it heals two characters, triggering pabbies effect twice. Also, keep in mind that with Popsicle and Flower, the effect reads up to two or three damage. So, if you have two damaged Gefels on board, you can actually trigger pabbies effect up to six times for each point of damage for a total of 12 lore per pabby. The same goes for teeth and ambitions, as you can damage two friendly characters, then heal up to four times for a total of eight lore per pabby. You can even target the teeth and ambitions on two pabbies you've just played on the board that turn, letting you go for an OTK completely from hand. There are two other ways to damage the characters on our board. We can challenge into our opponent's characters, or we can use launch, letting us get five damage. The mulligan for this deck is actually surprisingly simple. Our number one priority is to full mulligan for a Popsicle, Quill, and Flower Charm. These are the absolute core of this deck and imperative to building the value you need to win the game. In slower matchups, you want to opt for pure value, focusing on ramping and card draw. Faster matchups, you mulligan for board control. Great way to do this is Popsicle or Flower on one, Fell on two, and then Quill on three. For healing items, you should be able to control the board while keeping Gofell alive as an ever-present threat. 
If you have everything you need for 1234, then don't be afraid to keep Be Prepared in your mulligan as it's key to buy time for this deck's strategy. Because this deck is currently configured for a slower meta, if we were to see aggro decks rise, I'd recommend optimizing it in response. As for our first weakness, hyper aggro can be quite difficult to deal with, as they can re-ready and bounce while questing for a bunch of lore with cards like Merlin, LeFou, and Pinocchio. We're quite strong into Sapphire Steel, you do have to play very carefully into a whole new world decks in general so that you don't get milled and opt more for a slower Tomatoa beatdown plan. As for literally every other late game deck in Lorcana, we are ridiculously favored. This is because we have the greediest and highest value game plan. Yes, that does include Ruby Amethyst Control. As long as you keep stalling out the board, eventually we can just win with cards from our hand. Our Ruby Amethyst opponent has no way to interact with our resources as they can't remove items and they can't discard cards from our hand. For other options, I gotta say I'd want to get rid of a lot of the one ofs It's because I prefer putting as many of the cards I consider good as consistently as possible. Ellie and Fabrice were really passionate about the idea of one ofs Their argument is that when playing a best of three in paper, the opponent would have to play around more cards, especially as we could hide what we're inking with Quill. You're also likely to see all of these cards as you're drawing through so much of your deck. Obviously this worked for Ellie and the Vienna tournament, but I'm not a big fan of the idea as I'd rather consistently see the best cards as opposed to a variety of different tools that I'm unlikely to draw at the times I want them. And if your opponent knows the deck, the surprise factor will be far less impactful. Secondly, rather than the one of one jump ahead, I'd either cut it out completely or I'd consider a free of one jump ahead to counter hyper aggro. This is because with the line of one jump ahead on two and then fishbone quill on three, we get to be prepared one turn earlier than we would have otherwise normally. That's it for the crash course of this very complicated deck. If you have any questions, I do encourage you to leave them in the comments below and I'll try my best to answer all of them. If you have any doubts, please give the deck a try for yourself. I know if I didn't see Ellie get top 16 in Vienna, I would have taken one look at this deck and thought it was terrible. But honestly, it's kind of insane. Item OTK has a lot of potential for creative deck building, especially going into set free into the Ink plans. If you want to understand how the heck to play this deck in practice, stick around for the gameplay section of the video. Okay, we're up against Ruby Amethyst. Mulligan, we need a two drop. So we're going to mull everything except the pop score because we need a ramp and a two drop. We get it? We get the haram, we get the ramp. Uh, and we get the two drop. We would prefer Cruella, but we can't always get what we wish for. For Tamata, not going to be play, able to play that for ages. Cool goes out, draw a card. Lovely jubbly. I don't know how I feel about the Judy Hops in this deck. I don't think I've ever... We don't run enough of them, but I get a chance to use Judy Hops into like spell books or flutes. I think that's really why I'm not a big fan of like running such a variety cards of a deck at like low ratios, because you don't see the cards that are relevant to the meta when you need them. If I put Gothel down, it trades 1 to 1 into Mim. If I heal it, it still trades 1 to 1 into Mim, so there's no point using the pop school just yet. Yeah, so I guess we can just trade 1 to 1. Better bing, better boom. And we ink a hops. Play a quill. Another Judy hops and then play a pop school. Next turn we could do like Haram into Teeth on the Maleficent to clear the board that way. Nice, play the Haram. Draw two cards. I think I will Inca develop your brain. And then what do we quill? Launch. What does launch get rid of? Launch gets rid of a Tremaine. I want to keep the neck. I want to keep a workshop. I want to keep the flower for draw. So I think we get rid of the launch. This way, if we get rid of the Maleficent. Trying to slow down their lore gain as much as possible. We're definitely playing the workshop. Question is, do we just go for draw or do we play the Nick? Nick gets a body on the board. I mean, let's quest with Haram first. See what we draw into. Yeah, okay. So we ink a quill. Play. Oh, um, poisoned apple. We don't have any princesses. Don't really need it. So we can ink that. 
And then if I play well, I can draw ink something and then play flower. Don't really need to let it go, so we can ink will let it go. Now we can play flower and keep drawing. We're really just setting up resources here for the Pabby OTK while trying to control that board. We're going to try to get rid of a Haram. Makes sense. So we definitely want to dig for a Be Prepared soon. Oh, perfect. Workshop. Play workshop. Draw. Play Nick. Grab a Popsicle. Will a Corella. Play Oh, wait, no. Should have, we should have called another one so we could keep drawing because we didn't need the Corella. Oh, well, that's a slight misplay. We, we missed out on drawing one card there. That's why you got to properly count how many workshops you have. I find it's easier to see in person. I should have placed the quills next to each other and the workshops next to each other just to be more organized. Yeah, well, we can play the Haram. Draw from the Popsicle. Nice. We can play... Oh, I'm quite tempted to clear with Maui. Get rid of the crap. And then quest with the shield. Oh, I keep forgetting I have two. I have two quills. Oh, this has really mess messed us up here. I think I quest with a Nick just because I want them to trade the Mimin rather than questing. But we've, yeah, we, we've missed out on like two or three card draws so far um, from not properly counting the workshops. Hopefully it shouldn't matter because we can still slow down the pace of the game and then get a be prepared out. Yeah, but we wanted to ramp free that turn with two quills. We could get enough card draw. There goes our Haram. Good thing we have another one. Oh, there's a be prepared. Lovely. I don't think we need it just yet. Let's wait for them to commit more resources to the board. Draw for Popsicle, draw for Workshop, draw for Workshop. We can ink for Cruella. Draw with Haram. Ink two things here and keep drawing. Very tempted to do that. Let's ink for Maui. Ink for Gothel. We have a Shield of Virtue and keep drawing. Looks like they're also going to keep playing for value. They've got the goat on the board, so be prepared. Definitely needs to come down. So we'll have a quest with Nick, quest with Haram, uh, put the flower into banish. Maybe we should just done shield because we have two shields. Yeah, we should have done the shield. But now we can be prepared. We have a popsicle. Draw with a popsicle. Uh, if we stop now, we can play Tomatoa. Don't really want to do that. I want to just keep drawing. Look for the combo pieces. Keep getting ink. Nice. Definitely don't need a second work a third workshop. We want something to soak up. Do we need the, what what don't we need? We need the Gothel. We want to play the Cruella. We can get rid of one nick. And play the Cruella. We can still ink something if we want to. I uh, kind of want the Maleficent for board control. Want Hades for board control. Um, I want the Tomatoa to threaten lethal. I want the pot as a heal. I mean, I guess we can. No, no, no. I want the pot as draw and healing item. So I don't think we ink anything. We can always ink it next turn. We got two quills. We might go for a be prepared here. Okay, Ursula. They're looking for a Sing Be Prepared. Rather than Ramp them, let's just play him. Oh, wait, what do we need? For, well, 17? Yeah, we can play Maleficent plus Tomatoa. Okay, 
Get rid of one of the shields of virtue. Draw more cards. Find stuff we want to ink. Nice. Definitely want to ink that. And play the Tamatoa. Grab a popsicle. And I want to keep all these cards. They're going to need to be prepared here. Or else we get destroyed by the Tamatoa. Okay. I don't think they have to be prepared. Or else we would have used it. What we can do here. Is Cruella. Into the Cuzco. They draw a card. We play Tremaine. And now we can just uh, keep drawing, keep ramping. Nice, there's one Pabby. There's another Be Prepared. There's a Workshop. Don't need a Workshop. Let's ink that. We have nine cards left in deck. They don't have a whole new world. Uh, we can win next turn just off of a Pabby. Let's get rid of the workshop. We're not going to need to draw many more cards. Oh, I really want to go for the triple pabby. How many cards do we have left? Let's do it. Let's go for the triple pabby. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Seven cards left. Six cards left. Five cards left. Three cards left. Four cards left. Okay. We can play the flower and not draw. And we can play the gumbo pot and not draw. The quill something. Uh, we're not going to need to be prepared. Ink that. And we're not going to need the Tomatoa. Ink that. Play out the Gumbo Pot. Can we get to triple? 7, 14, 21. I think we can. Yeah, yeah, we can get to... We can get to triple Babby next turn. <laughs> oh my god, it's actually happening. Triple Babby. Because <laughs> we just need 23 for the Teefs. There's the Be Prepared. We don't say well played, because that's probably BM. So we're going to ink for Maui. Oh my god, I'm at, I, my heart rate's actually going up because this is such a fun play. We are, oh, we have perfectly enough. So we go for one, two, three pabbies. Then we play for Teeths and Ambitions. Oh wait, we don't have enough damage. We need the launch. Have I thrown the game? Oh no! Okay, well, wait, is that enough? Oh, wait. Oh, it's enough! It's still enough! The Teef is enough on its own with a triple pabby and we win the game! <laughs> oh, that's insane. Okay, we are going into Amber Steel with Grand Pabby OTK. Yeah, if it's a Tiana matchup, we're, we're a bit scared because of restricting our ability to play Be Prepared. Pulling away all these Be Prepareds doesn't feel great either, um, but I think we're just going to keep the Quill because we need to look for Popsicle. We didn't find Popsicle or a 2-drop, which is not ideal. Yeah, so we ink for Tamatoa here, and then play Flower. We at least have the Maurice Workshop's Quill line. We still have Haram for draw on the item. Uh, inking a second Tamatoa feels kind of bad. Keep the Let It Go just in case we need it for Tiana. So we'll get rid of the second Tamatoa. As much as <laughs> I don't want to do that. We have 4x Tamatoas at least. There goes the Hercules. So they're definitely playing Shift Hercules. For Let It Go. Play Workshop. Next turn we can ink and play Quill. And get our Ramp and Draw engine going. Yeah, we're just gonna dig as hard as we can for it. Be prepared to reset the board. Oh, I needed to ink first. Oh well. Yeah, well, we just we just missed out on one draw because of that. Uh, definitely, this deck, this deck, you can make some very very tiny errors from playing too fast, and it can cost you a lot of tempo.
and maybe even cost you the game. We'll, we'll, we'll see how that affects us here. Well, they whole new world of us anyway, so the card advantage didn't matter. That is a plus side. They've just wheeled us into two B prepareds as well. But we want to let them dump their hand first, so I think we're just going to go for, for value here. Play the workshop. Draw from the workshop. Inca hops. Uh, quill a quill, because it's too expensive. Now we can play the popsicle. Draw from Popsicle and then draw from the two workshops. Hopefully they should start dumping their hand here and we can just go for a be prepared. Keep ramping and drawing. And find one of the two Tamatoas left in our deck. Okay nice, we can get rid of one of our singers at least. We're gonna go straight for the be prepared here. Uh, I don't think the Corellas are too useful in this matchup so let's ink both of them. Definitely want to, I mean we do want to keep drawing here, but maybe we want some board presence as well. We'll put, put the Gothel out so that way we can get full value from our draws next turn. Maybe should have healed the Gothel with a flower, would have been a smart idea because we do have an excess of items right now. Think of a quill. Top school, draw, draw. Draw, get some board presents. Oh, we t <laughs> no. Okay, I forgot to put a pop score in the graveyard. I'll check that one was there. So uh, that's on me. Well, play the pop score. Draw, draw, draw. Now we can quill something. Uh, do we need the shield of virtue? Shield of virtue could be useful. The next useful to recycle. Flowers useful for the. Actually, no. We've got. We don't need the flower. We've got a ton of draw items now. Uh, we'll get the Shield of Virtue on the board just in case they wheel us by singing with Tinkerbell. If they don't, we can just play Maleficent to get rid of a Tinkerbell and then keep drawing. Or we'll get rid of a Cinderella that way. Okay, nice, we just went for the quest. Oh, this is perfect. I mean, launch, deal five damage right back, gets rid of a Tinkerbell, that's pretty crazy. Play the Maleficent, get rid of a Cinderella. Quill away the Gothel, launch a Popsicle at the Tinkerbell. We'll keep the, keep the Gothel on board. I don't know how much we need. I don't think we need the Neck actually, so I'm going to ink it. I mean, I guess we kind of needed the Neck to find another Popsicle. We have enough for the combo here though, with just Pabby plus Gothel. You can go Pabby plus Gothel, heal, heal, heal. I'm kind of tempted to keep stalling out the board though. Oh, there's Teeth. Oh, Teeth's good for the combo. We already have... Teeth's great for the combo. We kind of want to find the second Pabby though, don't we? Yeah, so let's, uh, let's keep drawing. There's a Be Prepared. Perfect. Quest with Nick. Possibly just play the Be Prepared. Quest with Maleficent. Play the Be Prepared. We are. Uh, oh, no, no, we made a mistake there. We could have quested for two more lore because uh, we could have readied, quested, then readied with Shield of Virtue, then sung the Be Prepared. Should still win here though. Play a Judy Hops to draw cards. Particularly care about the Shield of Virtue right now. Okay, let's just start going for the combo. Play the Pabby. Play the Gothel. And start healing. So we can heal, we can get six law just off the Gothel. So heal for one, or for two. We don't really have any forms of removal, so I believe we're setting up lethal here. Oh, not quite. It's plus six. But if we have any way to get damage on our characters, then we will have lethal. Using strength, just so we can get the flutes up. 
not going to be enough. Nowhere near enough law. And they concede. Last game against our Amber Flute Song. We made multiple mistakes. Okay, we're up against Emerald Steel. Could be Discard. Could be Beast Relentless OTK. Got a Pops Corner open hand. That's nice. Got a Marisa's Workshop. Very nice. Uh, I think we mull everything except for Cruella and look for Quill. Which is a two drops good. Actually, do we even want the quill? We probably don't want the quill for this discard. We just want card draw, so maybe I should have kept one of the workshops. Oh well, um, I'm not going to use Tamatoa for a while, so we'll ink for Tamatoa and play a popsicle. Maybe for a Gothel is good here into steel. It looks like it. Oh, they might have an evasive though. What we can do is, I think we can safely ink one of the Cruellas. And play this Gothel. I mean, if we need to next turn. If we need to next turn, we can play. Play something. I don't know if they run five of cannons. I'm trying to, like, read it out here a little bit. Okay. Looks like they're giving us more time. I don't think we're going to need Judy Hops. Can we ink for Judy Hops? Play out a Cruella, play out a Flower, use Flower to heal Gothel, and then we can just safely quest. We can make us discard one card here, in which case we just get rid of the Pabby, and then we go for the Haram to draw more cards, and hopefully we can keep the Nick to recycle the Popsicle. Okay, nice, we're playing out the John. So we really just want to reach for Be Prepared. So Ink of Flower. Play the Haram, keep drawing cards. The Teeth doesn't really do anything for us here. Uh, we're, I think we're okay if they trade into our Corella, so we'll just keep questing. If they would need to trade either the Bucky or the John. Chief Bogo here would be a difficult card to deal with on turn 4. We're going with the Evasive. They're going to be have to have to be careful of the Corella. I think we get... Oh, no, the teeth is inkable, so I think we get rid of the Pabby. Okay. The teeth we keep, for sure. Next, I think we sing Cruella here. So we deal damage to our Haram, deal damage to the Flynn, then we ink a Gumbo Pot, bring back to play Nick, bring back a Popsicle, then we play the Popsicle, Draw a card, and then quest with Haram to keep drawing cards. Perfect. And we've got a bunch of items to just keep our card count high. And uh, negate the effects of discard. So next time we can play Workshop, play Shield of Virtue, quest with Haram to draw more cards. That's the Quill that we don't really want. I mean, it is a trigger for Workshop. I think having a backup Haram is good in case we clear this Haram. Really just want to look for the Be Prepared here. Sing Strength to remove the Cruella. Smart choice from them. Play Workshop. Play Shield. Draw off Workshop. There's the Be Prepared, exactly what we needed. I'm just going to keep drawing cards. Lovely. Uh, we probably want to keep the Haram in hand. But I think we'll just ink a brain and keep what we have. As each of these items represents at least one draw, Pop School represents two draws. Next turn, we can uh, just ink and play Be Prepared. I feel like I really want to keep the Haram, because we want it post Be Prepared, so I'm going to discard a flower and keep the Popsicle. Okay, so we've invested a ton of resources onto the board here, so this is going to be great to clear with Be Prepared. Get rid of the Bucky, the John, the Beast, the Tink, and the Shift Flynn. We have to discard a card. 
we we have to discard the haram here. We want to keep the pop skill for workshop, and we want to keep the be prepared. If they have another sudden chill to sing here. We'll definitely be in a worse position. A you have forgotten me would really hurt. Actually, is sudden chill even a song? Yeah, it is. But you have forgotten me is not a song, right? Okay. That sucks. Now we just need to hope we draw into an inkable. We can always get rid of a workshop. I'm questing with Haram to draw more cards if we need to before the be prepared. Probably what we're likely going to have to do here. Yeah, we need the draw, so let's get rid of the workshop. We don't have any items to trigger it anymore. Draw into more cards. There's another be prepared. Perfect. Quest with Gothel. Quest with Nick. Inca Maui. And play the be prepared. So we're at 13 law here, but we don't have we don't really have any resources. And we're gonna look for a way to try and discard our hand again. So we really want to get our resource engine going. I think we play this just to just to have a something to quest with. Really want to remove that beast if we can. We don't want to let them draw cards. I mean, we can quest here with hops and then make them choose what to remove with Tremaine. We're probably going to get rid of the flint and keep the beast. If they trade the beast into the hops, then they're not going to be able to get draw from it anymore. Okay, so now that beast will do 7 damage on their turn because they get plus 4 from the effect. They've just committed a second beast, so this is definitely a board we want to be prepared. We'll quest with Tremaine here, 17. And play the be prepared. We can just keep stalling out the board. Try and edge our way to 20 lore. There's an, another Flynn. This Tamatoa is perfect. We can ink for Gothel. Play the Tamatoa and bring back a Popsicle. And GG. That's a win against Emerald Steel Discard. You can't, really, the key to this matchup is conserving your card resources, not playing the quill, and then winning off of resetting the board through Be Prepared.